There's something called the weakness of strength. And what this means is that the very thing that can be a strength in someone and that we admire about them may be something that attracts us to them. Under different circumstances, it can actually be a weakness. There's always two sides to a coin. And when it comes to attributes that we find attractive, it's no different. An example of this is genius and insanity. Elon Musk is definitely a genius in all aspects of the word, right? The things that he's done, the things he's doing for the world, what he's projected to do, the moves and ways that he has made in his lifetime. However, what he said in articles and interviews is that he is working 18 to 20 hours a day, living at the office or sleeping on people's sofas seven days a week, 364 days of the year. That is insane. Another good example of being two sides of the same coin is love and hate. When we love someone deeply, it means that we have the highest emotional stakes with them. If there's an ultimate betrayal or they hurt us to a certain extent, it's quite possible to hate them. In fact, I don't think it's actually possible to hate without love in some case. In fact, a lot of the time, hate is born out of love. Two sides of the same coin. Essentially, we can have an error of asking for everything. And we have to understand that human beings are flawed creatures, okay? So it's important to know the strengths that you're looking for in someone, but also recognize the fact that there's an other side to that coin that we need to accept that comes with that. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Kit, your personal dating mentor. And in today's video, I'm gonna go through six compromises you're likely gonna have to make if you are going to obtain a high value man. But before we get into that, you know I always love hearing from you, so come find me on Instagram, drop me a message, and let me know, is there one of these five compromises that you just can't do? Or maybe you're happy to do all of them, but it's the reality of life. Or if you wanna book a one-to-one -one session with me, just click in the link below. All right, now let's get into the video. The first compromise that we should all be aware of is that if his strength is that he is driven, then the compromise is that you have less quality time with him. A lot of people think that people who are very successful, who have a lot of financial freedom and abundance, think they're just sitting in their office on the 50th story of the building, just with their feet up, watching the hundreds of thousands rolling. And that is not even remotely how people on that level work. Men who are high earners or who are on their way to become high earners, they're working 70 to 90% of the time. Getting to a high level where you're having a very high income in majority of industries takes sacrifice with time with family, sacrifice with time with friends, missed birthdays, missed parties, missed weddings. It takes a lot of that because their priority and goal is to get to a high level. And part of that when you're dating and being in a relationship with a guy like this is he's going to be prioritizing his work over spending time with you. Now that's not saying that he shouldn't make time for you, but understand that his priority is going to be what he is very driven in. So you need to know for yourself, okay, if this is a guy who is quite successful and he is working a lot of the time, are you willing to compromise on the amount of time you have with him. Some people are willing to, some people aren't, but you have to decide that for yourself. The next thing they have to compromise on is if the strength is that he's very desirable, the compromise is women will be trying to take him from you. Now for a lot of women, out of 50 guys that might approach them either in a bar or a coffee shop or in their DMs, maybe swipe right on them on a dating app, out of 50 guys that actually would take an interest in them, on average, she will only like anywhere between two to five of them enough to actually give them a chance for a date. And because generally speaking, women do have higher standards than men, which is fair enough, out of 50 guys, not a lot of guys actually tick all these boxes. And because very few guys actually tick these boxes, it means the one or two guys in 50 that you find very desirable, other women are gonna find him very desirable as well. Because desirable men can be hard to come by, okay? It's not every day you come across a guy that you really, really want and you really wanna take seriously. So because there can be few and far between, if a woman finds a guy who matches her criteria, even if he's in a relationship, she may go through extensive lengths to try and get him. I've seen this happen before. Yeah, I know, some of y'all can't be trusted. <laughs> Now, this obviously doesn't mean that he's gonna be swayed because if he's a man of principle and a man of his word, if anything changes, he's gonna communicate that to you. So if he says to you, hey, 
I'm here with you and that's all I care about. It doesn't matter if 10 other women want him, he's only focused on you. However, it's going to be the case that maybe other women will be trying to get him knowing full well he's in a committed relationship. And this is just something to be mindful of. And the best mindset to have if this is the case and you are with a guy like this where other women want, the best way to think about it is, well, A, you have a connection with him, right? You know what you have with him and he knows what he has with you. So some random girl approaching him, trying to throw herself on him, that's not going to sway him from what you have. Or B, if he is the kind of guy to get swayed so easily, then the sooner you know that, the better. But this is something that comes with a guy who is of high value and who might be quite desirable. The next thing you're going to have to compromise on is if his strength is that he's a strong, confident, capable leader, the compromise might be he expects you to always be on his program even when he might be wrong. Now a lot of women express that they want a man who is capable to lead, right? A man who they know they can rely on, a man who's going to be their rock, a man who knows how to make a plan and make a decision. Now, while these are very good qualities, if a man is going to be the leader in your relationship, it means there are certain expectations he's gonna have of you. He's gonna expect you to be on his program. He's gonna expect you to follow his lead. Now, there might be times where he may be wrong and you want to express that he may be wrong. Now, if he's a good man, he's gonna listen to what you have to say. If he's chosen you, it means he does value your mind and he's gonna value your opinion. But at the end of the day, if he sees himself as the leader, then it is his word that is the final word. And he's not always gonna get it right. That's the case, right? No one is right 100% of the time. But even when he is gonna get it wrong, he may expect you to still be on his program and for you to still follow him. A leader can only lead when someone chooses to follow. So if that's what you're looking for, just know this might come with the territory. This next one that you're gonna have to be wary of is his strength is that he's well respected by many, but the compromise is that he expects you to be respectable. This means that he's gonna have an expectation of you to not do anything that disrespects the relationship as he sees it. And this can go from anything from going on crazy girls hen nights to wearing provocative clothing when you go out. It depends on the man, depends where he is. You may wanna go on a hen night where you can be jumping up and down the pole, right? But he may not want you to do that because he thinks, well, if anybody sees you as my woman doing that, that may look bad on him. I'm not saying it's necessarily right, but this is something that might come with the territory of being a man who is very, very respectable. I mean, think about it. Do you think that Obama would have had a good chance of becoming a president if his wife was seen twerking on a pole? Nah. Everyone knows that he had to be squeaky clean as well as his wife. Depending on what the guy does in his profession or who he is to his circles and his community, public image might be very important to him, especially if he is someone who is highly respected. Because at the end of the day, if you're the person that he chooses to marry and you're the person who's gonna get his name, then that respect is going to be afforded to you being his wife or his woman who, to whoever it is that respect him. This next thing that you might have to compromise on is if his strength is that he provides enough that you have the luxury to choose not to work, the compromise is that if you don't work, then you are utterly dependent on him. Now there's nothing wrong with being utterly dependent on a guy who you know, love, and you would trust with your life. That's absolutely fine because you've chosen the right kind of guy for you. But the reason I'm bringing this point up is because women fought to have their independence over the decades. Women fought to be able to have the choice. Now this would be a choice you would be making to be dependent on him. But women did fight for the right to be able to have their own financial independence so that they couldn't be dictated and controlled by a man that they were financially dependent on. This is why even if you don't have to, there's nothing wrong with having a part-time job that you're passionate about, which is what I would always recommend. Now, what if you do want the luxury of not having to work? How can you ensure that him having financial leverage on you doesn't hurt you further down the line? Well, this is where who you choose is absolutely paramount. There is nothing wrong with being completely dependent on a guy, supposedly that he is the right kind of guy to be dependent on. Not every single person who has the power to abuse uses their power for abuse. A man of honor, of morals and integrity 
even if things go bad, he's always gonna wanna make sure that the woman he chooses is okay and taken care of. That he would never try and use the position he's in to abuse or manipulate you. Also as well, there's this natural instinct in men to want to protect women, okay? It's been this way for hundreds of years. But what I will say is if you choose a guy just because of the money he has without actually knowing his character on a deeper level, then you enter at your own risk. And this next one that you might have to compromise on is if a strength is that marrying him, you become part of his legacy, the compromise is you may have to sign a prenup. Look, I'm just gonna be real honest with you, okay? Marriage for a lot of guys today does not look like a very good deal. Today, many modern men witness guys being financially, economically, and emotionally devastated because of divorce. And actually, it's one of the biggest reasons why men over 40 commit suicide because they've been such a devastating divorce through the court system. Divorce and family courts are heavily biased in the woman's favor. And even with all that, there are still men who want to get married. And, and for the high value men who do want to get married, they're not stupid, okay? They may want to do that, but they also are smart about how they wanna go about that. So a guy of high value might want to protect himself should things not work out. Now I know this doesn't sound romantic, but at the end of the day, marriage is a contract between the couple and the state. And if he's a businessman, he's gonna be looking at it as like a deal, as a business contract almost. And like any business deal, he's gonna to wanna to protect himself if things don't go the way he wants them to. So all the things I just went through aren't actually things that you have to do for a man, but that if you're going to be with a man who is seen as top shelf, then these are some of the things that you're likely gonna to have to deal with. Now for you, if some of these things you don't really vibe with, that's okay. But it just might mean that a guy who's seen as top, top shelf, maybe that's not the guy that's compatible with you. That maybe somebody else on a different kind of level is actually more what you're looking for and has compromises that actually you're more willing to make. It's your choice what you decide to get into. But we have to know what we're getting into before we choose to do it. As I was always taught, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So let's always be prepared. If you're looking for a guy who sparks up your love life, make sure you subscribe to this wonderful tribe. And as always, keep it slick. Bye.